Good evening. Good evening there, Dr. Lewis. <laughs> Good evening there, Miss Odell, Shoney. Sister Linda Walker, hello. Sister Neely, how you doing? Get your knee off of Early's neck so he can get up. There he is. He, you got your knee off of Early's neck. Hi, Early. <laughs> Sister Irene, God bless you. Uh, Drew. Hey, how you good to see you, Drew? Hey, man, good to see all of you coming on so we can get into this Sunday school lesson. Sister Betty, hey, man, God bless you. And Sister Walker, God bless you. Sister Coatwright, hey, man. Well, well, we'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Amen. Our God and our Father, we thank you for another day that you've given. We even thank you for the rain that came down to water the earth. And we just thank you that you're moist in your soil. And, and as winter come upon us, we'll have moisture in the ground that we can uh, look forward to the springtime for. And Lord, we just ask your blessing continue upon us as we go forth. In your word tonight, we thank you for these lessons of Israel in the wilderness and how you provided for them, that you proved that you were Jehovah Jireh, that you are a provider. And we just thank you that even in our lives today that you have been a provider for us. You provided us with all that we needed and, and everything, Father, that, that uh, I was, some of the things that even our heart desired, you gave them to us. But thank you for supplying our needs according to your riches and glory through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Now bless us as we come into this lesson. Open up our hearts. Open up our minds. Let us understand and uh, see what you are saying to them and how you are leading them that you are still leading us today in the same way. Now bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen. God bless you all again. And... Uh, this uh, lesson uh, is uh, as God provides water from a rock uh, for, the, for the children of Israel. And uh, this being their, uh, actually the fourth uh, crisis of, the, of them in the wilderness and, and really less than three months. They've, been, they've encountered four different crises now. And now they're craving for water. They need more water for the moisture in their lips and uh, to help them. And so... Uh, when they come up in, into this, this time of thirst, uh, one of the things that I, I think that we need to see in this is, uh, if this is the fourth crisis that they've encountered and God provided the, the, for them in the first three crises, looked like they would have learned that God is Jehovah Jireh. God is a, a provider. That's what Abraham said, Jehovah Jireh. You know, Abraham was uh, was faced with uh, taking his son up on the mountain and, and uh, offering him up as a sacrifice. And when he got up there to offer his son up as a sacrifice, uh, he encountered his son, asked him on the way up, said, I see the wood and I see the fire and I see the knife, but where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide a sacrifice for himself. And so Abraham had learned that God is a provider, that God will provide. And that's what we need to learn. I think from more than anything from this lesson tonight, uh, that we need to learn that God is a provider for his people, that God will provide for his children. And uh, this first uh, is, the, is the test, okay? The first part is called a test. So verses 1 through 3 is called a test. And it says, And all of the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin. After their journey, 
according to the commandments, listen at this, of the Lord, and pitched in Raphidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Now, God, now notice this now, they journeyed according to the commandments of God. God has commanded them to go this direction. God is leading them in this direction. And he sh showed them where to pitch. Because notice this. They moved when the cloud raised up off of the tent. Or when God's cloud was moving, they would move behind the cloud. They followed the cloud. Wherever the cloud went, that's what they did. So if God stopped them here, that means that God pitched them here. And if God going to pitch them here, that means that God is going to provide for them there, he wouldn't, God won't lead you somewhere and not provide for you. I'm a living witness that God is a provider. <clears throat> and if where he, we always say where he leads, then he's going to always provide. Okay, God bless you, Sister Vicki. Good to see you. And uh, so God provides for his children. And here, he, it says he led them here. He, the, he, he, he it was there according to his command. And they pitched where he told them to pitch, okay? And notice this. God pitched them where there was no water. What, 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 is, God, what is God doing? Uh, pitching them in a place where he know that there is no water, okay? Because God knows everything, so God knew there was no water. But what he wanted was the people to learn how to trust him. My brothers and sisters, a lot of things that you may encounter in life. It's only God getting you to a point where you learn to trust him in everything. I mean, there are some tough things that we encounter in life. I've, I've encountered some tough things and I've asked God, Lord, you know, I, I need you in this. And, and we, we encounter those things, but we ought not to give up on God because we encounter toughness. Because God is a provider. And that's the key to the whole thing. God will provide what is needed for his people. And so they, they didn't have no water to drink there. And now the people chided with Moses. Meaning that they strived. Or they, they, they was arguing with Moses. Okay, And they said, uh, give us water that we may drink. Now... They don't see water. They know Moses don't have water. But they're, they're testing Moses. They are upset with Moses. They are saying to Moses, they are arguing with Moses. And you done brought us out here to let us die. Why? Moses asked them, why are you going to chide with me? Why are you arguing with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? Now, why do you want to tempt God? You know that God brought you here. I'm following God's direction just like you. And God done led us to this place. Why you want to tempt him? Why you want to? Why you want to argue with him? Can't you learn to trust him? Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, things come our way to see if we can trust God. If we really will trust God. Now we say all the time, "I believe in the Lord. I trust the Lord, and I'm I got faith in God." But when, as the old saying go, but when the rubber hits the road, where do you stand then? How do you respond when you have to uh, face something that you can't not control at that point? You don't have any control over it. You don't, you don't even know how you're going to get out of it. So how do you deal with a situation like that? Now, here they are. Notice now, they are out in the, in the wilderness of sin. They are out in this wilderness of sin, journeying to a place called uh, Raphidim. And they get to Raphidim and no water there. Then they start complaining. Uh, who, who is it that brought you out of Egypt using 10 plagues against the Egyptians? Who is it that got you to the Red Sea when you thought at the Red Sea, here we are ready to die here at the Red Sea? And he opened the waters up. And they walked across on dry ground. Who did that? Who is it that drowned the Pharaoh's army who was charging hard behind them and drowned in all of them. Who did that? Who is it that turned bitter water into sweet water that they could drink? Who did that? Who is it that sent quail in the evening and 
laying in the camp and get up in the morning and it's, it's, what is it on the ground? They, that was manna mean. What is it? They didn't know what it was, so they call it manna. What is it? It's on the ground. All you got to do is pick it up and it's and it's taste sweet like wafers. They got bread to eat. Who is it that did all of this? And now you come to a dry place and just because there is no water, you're going to start complaining again against him who has shown you that he can hold water back while you walk across. He can turn bitter water into, into drinkable water. And, and now you're worried about because there's a dry place. How do we get like that when we have some dry spots in our lives? When those things are dry and, uh, you know, when, we are, when things are going well and, and we are flourishing in life and things are, or just, we, as old saying, go hunk-a-dory for us. And we'll, we'll, we'll ride high, but then when we have to come down to the valley and some things that, that we, can't, we can't control, then what we, what we gonna do? Now, here they are, and uh, they, they don't have nothing, so they start, they start arguing with the person they could see. <laughs> uh, that's what happens in the churches, I'll be honest with you. People are, I, and, and St. Luther know I always tell them all the time, people don't have no, no people problem. You got a God problem. See, when, when you start arguing with the people in the church and fussing with the pastor, it's because you can't get to God. It really, your problem is you got a God problem, but you can't get to God, so who are you going to talk to? You're going to get his representative. And in the church, the pastor is his representative, so people start jumping on the pastor, start complaining to the pastor. And the pastor's doing what you're doing. He's following the cloud. That's what the Israelites were doing. They were following the cloud in the daytime, and at night they were following this pillar of fire. So the pastor's doing the same thing. He's following the same God. He, he's working with God. He's there with God. He's, he, he, all he's doing is just following God. And just like you, you're following God, he's following God. But you're going to chide with him because you can't see God. You can't get to God. So you got to have somebody. We got to have somebody physically <clears throat> to get in. You know, that's sort of like in a family. Uh, the husband is angry maybe with something about something that's going wrong in his life. And the only somebody he got to abuse is his wife or his children. And so what do he do? He, he end up abusing them because why? He get to who he can get to. So we have to learn that. You don't, they, they, was, they, they chided with, with Moses, and Moses asked him, why are you going to chide with me? Why are you going to argue with me? And I, and wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And, so, and the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, wherefore is this that thou hast brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cows? All with, with thirst? Why are you going to bring us out here? And you know, Reverend Sims preached a sermon many years ago. I'll never forget it. Never forget it. It was a, it was a, the this, this sermon was a great sermon and the topic was just awesome. He said, you got your eyes on Canaan, but your mind is in Egypt. <laughs> and that, now they got you, you got your eyes on Canaan. They was, they had their eyes on Canaan, but their mind was still in Egypt. We had, we at least in Egypt, we had some graves. At least in Egypt, we had this. At least in Egypt, we had that. And you know what? This is the same thing with, I'm, and I'm going to say it I'm, I'm publicly, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, this is what's wrong with black folks today. They got their eyes on a blessing of moving forward. <coughs> you but their minds are still in Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Tennessee, Arkansas, all them places where they were oppressed. Their minds are still oppressed. You got to get the shackles off of your minds because you ain't got no business sitting around begging when you got a God who provides. This is what, this is what we got to get out of that. We got to stop sitting around begging for a, a, a biscuit when you can get some flour and make your own, make your pan of biscuits. 
So we got to we got to learn this. So we got to learn who provides for us. If God loves everybody else and provides for them, why can't he provide for me? Now, and they got their minds on on Egypt. And the eye, they were they, they listen, they wasn't but three, they wasn't but three, four, three, four months from the promised land. By this, Dr. Santa Ray says it like this. Dr. Ray said that the the the, the Israelites wouldn't 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 know uh, forty years uh, uh, from from the promised land uh, in, in, in 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 distance. He's they were just forty years from the promised land in discipline. <laughs> so so if you are not disciplined yet, then God sometimes have to chide you. He have to he have to he have to take, keep you out. Because you go in, you're going to tear up what he gives you. Get a nice house. Six months down the road, it run down. That's not what God intends. When God gives you something, he expects for you to make it better. You do something else with it. Do anything that, that God gives you, you should, make, you should keep it and make it better. And so here he is. Got these people here. He know where they are. But they saying, here we are. Out here, you done brought us out here to let us die of thirst. And even going to kill our cows. Mm. Our cows going to die because of lack of thirst. Ain't that something? They don't trust God. It's a test. God is testing them. He the one brought them there. He's testing them. To, he's trying to develop them, really. It, 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 the test is... When you have a test, the test is not for the teacher. The test is to tell the teacher where you are. And so God bring them here. Now, he done took him through, the, uh, got him out of Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, gave him water, that, that turned water, the sweet water, from in, I mean, bitter water into sweet, sent quails and, 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 uh, and in the morning and bread, I mean, in the evening and bread in the morning, he done did this. And they still can't pass a test. A simple test of God will provide. A simple test that God will provide. Now, so here they are complaining against Moses. And they're complaining against Moses because Moses is the only somebody they can see. They can't see God, so they got to complain to somebody. And so they complain against Moses. Now watch verses 4 through 6 where uh, there's, there's a respawn here. And Moses cried unto the Lord. <laughs> now Moses, at, at least Moses know where to go. Moses know who to talk to. Moses cried unto the Lord saying, what shall I do unto this people? Now, Moses recognized these are your people, God. And then you know what? I'm gonna, uh, I, I have to share this because when I first started preaching, uh, God led me to the book of Exodus. And he had me to read the story about Moses. I don't know why. I didn't know why he had me reading this book. He had me reading the book of Proverbs. I didn't know why at that time he had me reading these books. But he, he led me to the book of Proverbs. I read it over and over and got it in my head. I, and I read the book of uh, of uh, Exodus, and I got this in my head. And uh, uh, I just kept, uh, you know, whatever he tell me to read, that's what I would read. And I learned here, this is what I, I learned here, that the people was constantly complaining against God. Hmm. Again, they was complaining at Moses, but it was against God. But watch what I, the, my main lesson that I learned here was, that Moses never argued with the people. Moses went to God. Now, what shall I do with these people? They be almost ready to stone me. Moses, they re they really ready to stone me, God. Because they, they you know, they, so that, if, if Moses tell God, they almost ready to stone me. That means somebody was raising their voices. <laughs> you know how y'all get, uh, you get mad. You know how you get, you uh, that, that voice, if neighbors can hear you next door in that, and you got a big yard, and, and but the neighbors can hear you over there screaming and hollering and <laughs> everything because you 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 got to raise your voice. And as, as black folks, we think the only way we can even get through our to our children, we got to raise our voice. 
Why? Because our, the voices was raised at us all the time. And so we think we have to do that. So somebody had to be raising their voices. If Moses said that, Lord, they, read, they almost ready to stone me. So, so that folk, those folk were raising their voices. Then the Lord spoke back to Moses. Now, watch this. He said, go on before the people. Go on before them. Go on, get, just lead them out. And take uh, the elder. Take with you the elders. He wants you to take the elders of Israel. Just You go before the people. Take the elders with you. And take that rod I gave you. Okay? That the one that you smoked the river with. All right? Take that rod with you. Take it in your hand and go. Now, that's what God tells Moses. Just take the rod and go. Take them elders with you and y'all go. Now, that would have been some folks may have wanted to stop and say, what, what, what am I going to do with it? What am I going to do when I get there? What am I going to tell them? You know, God told Moses to just get them, go. How many would just go? Trust God and just go. Sometimes God just send us that way. Just go. I don't know where I'm going. He told me some things, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't know how they were going to work out. But he told me to do it, and that's what I did. And things worked out. Build a church. We ain't got no money. The people told us, man, Brother Gilmore went sit down and talked to them people. Man told us it's going to take at least, uh, you got to have at least 25% of it. We might can get by with 20, but you need 25% of what the bill is going to cost. Now, what is it going to cost? I said, well, it'll be well over a million dollars. Wow, you think you can pay? He's got his little calculator and figured it up. You know how much that'll be a month? That'll be about $8,000 a month. I said, we can handle it. You can? Yeah, well, I figured we can handle it. Why? Because God told us to do it. And, and we didn't have the money. We didn't even have all the money when we started building. We didn't have all the money. But God said, do it. And that's what we did. And you see what happened. See, you got to, sometimes you don't even, the pastor don't even know, the preacher don't even know what, where, where he's going or what direction he, God is leading him. But all he's doing is following. And so he follows God. And God will lead him where he wants him to go. Okay? And so sometimes don't, I remember when we were, we were looking at, at uh, uh, buying that church on Lincoln Park Boulevard. People ask me, what, what are we going to do? I told them, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I don't, I got to wait on God. I can't, can't move until God says so. And then we started looking at it back in April, and everybody just kept, uh, what, did, what did the Lord say? What did the Lord say? The Lord told me, to, uh, I'm waiting on him. And it was the fourth Sunday in November that God spoke to me. And he spoke through Reverend Craig Melvin Smith in a sermon that he was preaching at the anniversary. And he read out of the book of Titus, for this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou might set things in order. And he said, stay where you are. That was his sermon subject, stay where you are. And I told the people, they said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to stay where we are. <laughs> this is what God said, do stay where we are. you got to listen to God. you you got to follow him. And Moses, he told Moses, just go and, and take the people with you. And then he said, I'll stand before you there upon the rock in her, in her, her, her. I'm going to stand before you. And thou shalt smite the rock, and thou shalt come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Now he did what God told him to do. He followed God's order. Go hit the rock, smite me, hit it, strike the rock, and water came out. And they had, they had, now you think about it, you got about two million people there, so it had to be a flood. They had to flood it out in some kind of way. God had had a pond or uh, oasis or something where the water could run in and, and stand so the people all could come and get their water. That's Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. Now he's providing water in a dry place. That's why you hear old folks say he'll be a water in a dry place. And now the old folks had, they didn't have much theology, but they sure had faith in God that God would provide. Mm -hmm. That story is told, uh, uh, the preachers used to be preaching and tell the story about a woman didn't have no food in the house. And she got up and just humming, and the children were watching her. She was humming in the kitchen, setting the table. She went around and set the table, and she's humming, and they knew ain't no food in the house. 
and she's humming and setting the table and said, uh, uh, then she started praying, Lord, I thank you for the food that you're going to provide for us. And, and the children said, that they talking to each other, what's going on? Is mama going crazy? Mm -hmm. Ain't no food in the house. And she kept talking about thinking and said that was uh, one of the deacons from the church was standing at the gate waiting on her to finish praying with a box of groceries that they brought. Mm -hmm. You see, that's how God provides. You just got to trust him. Uh, things don't always look right, but you got to trust him. That's when you. That's when the, the, the faith is is not being able to see what God is going to do, but faith is trusting God to do what you know He will do or can do. You know, I, the Hebrew boy said, "I don't know a king if he's going to deliver us or not." But before we go in, just in case he doesn't deliver us, let us make our statement. And what's your statement? He said, "If he don't deliver us." Don't you ever think that he's not able. Mm -hmm. He's still able. Even if he do not deliver us from this furnace, uh, from your hands, he's still able. And see, that's the kind of faith you got to have in God when you're going through some tough stuff in your life. You went, Sometimes things get tough. They get tough. And I, But when they get tough like that, you got to remember who can provide. Whatever it is you need, God will provide. Jehovah Jireh, he will provide. And he provides what is needed. Not all the time what we want, but he provides what is needed because he know, he know better than we do what we really need. And so he Moses uh, hit the rock and the water came out and, and then he, he called that place, the name of that place, Mesa. Now Mesa means temptation. Because this is the place they tempted God. Again, think about this now. They tempted Jehovah here. They, out of the thing that he had already done, and then they tempt him again here in, in, in this place. He called it Mesa. And then Merabah. Merabah also means strife or contention. In other words, they tempted God, creating strife and contention with God in this place because they didn't have no water. They going to create tension between God, strife between God, going to test and tempt God here. If you, you, in other words, let me, let me say how they, they probably would have said something like this. Uh, if, if, if you so big, God, why don't you get some water for us? Mm -hmm. Tempting God. You, got, you cannot tempt God. You got to wait on him. Some things, God is not going to move at your command. He's going to move at his own time. And there are, that, there are times when God works at his own, he's going to work at his own pace and he works in your life at times to let you uh, uh, get to this is what to me what God is doing with them is developing that faith, developing their trust in Him. That's what I believe God is doing because they're gonna have to trust Him when they get when they encounter these enemies that they're gonna encounter when they get in got to go into that will uh, into the uh, they're gonna be well they're gonna walk around the wilderness for forty years because they just tempted God. I but then when they get in the promised land, they got to trust God to be the God that's going to take care of them. He, because they don't have no army. They got to go through these armies. They got to they get where they're going. They're going through armies. I mean, that the, 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 uh, uh, all of these Zetlots and all of these fellas, they had to go through Amorites and Amalekites and all of these, they got, these they got to go through. To get the way, and then they got to run them out the land. And then they got to encounter these giants in the land. And so they're going to have to trust somebody greater than themselves. So God is trying to develop, I think, faith in them as he's doing this to them here. And and uh, it said because of the chiding, chiding, chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? Is God see that? That's what they they. If you heal, then why don't you do something for us? How many times do you hear people say that? 
If you hear me, Lord, why don't you do this? If you, you, I know you can hear me. Why don't you do this and do this? And you see, we're tempting God. We ain't got no business tempting God. We got to let God work. God is always, yes, Zora, he is an on-time God. God is on time, all the time. He, 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 I know you might be anxious sometimes. We get anxious, don't we? We get a little, we get a little anxious. I, I, I wish, I, I, know I, I know I got to wait on him, but I sure wish he'd hurry up. Because some things, you know, uh, my wife and I, we, we were building this house. We was anxious. It, 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 it took a year. Over, over a year. And that was time, I'd get a little anxious. And she said, yeah, but they're they they doing a good job. The Lord going to bless it. And uh, it just, you know, we get we get impatient. And we do. We get impatient. And uh, we just have to wait. And, and, and God's own time, he will always do what he's going to do. And we just have to learn how to trust him. Got to be patient with him. You got. You can't rush. You can't. As the old saying go, you cannot hurry God. Mm -mm. You just have to wait. And so, here they are out here and 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 in the wilderness, as Reverend Sim said, they got their they got their eyes on Canaan, but their minds are still in Egypt. Wow, we had in Egypt we had water to drink. In Egypt we had graves. Why are you gonna when when Pharaoh was charging on them? Why you bring us out here to die in this wilderness? And at least we had graves in, in to bury our people in in Egypt. My goodness, folks, get your minds out of Egypt and put your minds on the promised land. The promised land, he said, is flowing. I'm gonna send you to a land flowing with milk and honey. You ain't got to worry about what you're going to eat. That The land is flowing with milk and honey. They come back with grapes so big that it took two men to carry a bunch of them. Look at what God is providing. Look how God provides. This is the God that we serve. And the same God that provided for Israel in that day is the same God that's providing for us today. Why doesn't he provide for me then? That's I, I hear you. I heard you. Why doesn't he? Why hasn't he provided? Because you haven't trusted him. Well, I'm just waiting. Whenever, whenever the Lord bless me, I'm gonna do this. No, no. God is saying you got to move out first. I'm gonna do what I say. Do you trust me? Now I have to testify myself. Now, when God told me to leave my job the first time, it was November of 1981. November 1981. That was uh, exactly one year after we had organized that church. God told me to leave that job. He had been talking to me before, but he told me to leave that job. I wouldn't leave it at that time. I didn't leave it. It just got to the point where I had to trust God. I had a family. My wife, I had her to take leave her job. So now, if I leave this job, the church ain't giving me but $225 a week. The car note was, was $180. The, the house note was $223. We had light, gas, water, Children, <laughs> as we said, we had some children at that time. We would, <clears throat> so we still had, I think we had three at that time, three children to work to, to try to feed, and, and 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 the Lord is telling me to leave that job. I'm gonna provide for you. It's tough. When I told my wife, I said I got to leave the job. I said I can't stay no longer. And she said, well, if that's what the Lord said, that's what you got to do. And so four months later, I left the job. Not knowing what the church was going to be able to do for me because the church is only 16 months old at this time. But the Lord told me to leave it. And I had to trust him to provide. 
And that's and guess what? He did. So I can testify that, that, that he, he is Jehovah Jireh. That he is a provider. But you gotta sometimes God is, is working you to let you learn for yourself about him. Now Moses already knew. How did Moses knew, know that God was a was a provider? When God encountered him at the at the burning bush. He told Moses, he said, now, what is that you got in your hand? Moses said, a staff. He said, drop it on the ground. Moses dropped it on the ground and turned to a serpent. Moses jumped. He said, pick it up. Moses reached down, picked it up. It turned back into a stick. He said, run your hand in your bosom. Moses stuck his hand in his bosom. Now pull it out. He pulled it out. It was leper. Turned white on him. Lepers. He said, stick it back. He stuck it back in there again. Pull it out. He pulled it out again. It was back like it was. So Moses already understood that God will provide. But the people had to learn that. It's not just enough for me to know that God will provide. It's for you to know. You got to trust God for yourself. You can't, you can't rely on nobody. You got to learn your lesson from God when God showed you. I told you all. He, I guess it was my lesson when I first come here. That Jehovah Jireh, when I left home and got, got off the bus with three dimes, he was, he, and he proved to me that he will provide, gave me a job. I went to work. In two days, I was at work. He provided. And this is what you got to learn. This is the lesson. The lesson is learn that God, it ain't that God pro, provides water from a rock. No, that's nothing for God. He made the rock, he made the water, he made everything. So it ain't no, it ain't nothing for him to bring water from wherever he want to bring water. But your problem is, do I trust God to provide for me in the, in the situation that I'm in? Where I need him to provide for, I need him to be Jehovah Jireh for me. Can I trust Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides? Can I trust him? I would answer that question, yes. You can trust God. You can trust God to provide whatever is needed in your life. God, why couldn't you trust him? He owns everything. David said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. All the silver and gold, he said, belong to him. Cows on thousands of hills belong to God. And if I was hungry, he said, I wouldn't tell, man. I'd go to God because he can provide that for me. So you can, your uh, lesson from this lesson is to learn that God will provide. Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. Abraham told his son, when his son asked him, said, Father, I see the wood and, and I, I see the, the, the fire, and, uh, but uh, where's the sacrifice? <laughs> Abraham, who had learned to trust God, because Abraham had messed up a couple times himself, you know. He's supposed to have been waiting on God. And 25 years later, he gets that child that God promised him. So he, Abraham understood that God will provide whatever he said he's going to provide. So Abraham could tell his son, son, the Lord is going to provide himself a sacrifice. Ain't that something? The Lord is going to provide himself. Now notice he said, the Lord is going to provide himself. Because he, now remember this now. He told him to offer him up as a burnt offering. Mm -hmm. now, now it's different in a, in a, in a regular offering or a burnt offering now. Now a regular offering, you trim the meat and you take the, the, the thing that God told you to cut away from the meat and they would burn that as a sacrifice. And they would eat the meat. Part of it went to the priest, and they would eat the other part. 
That was how that was how a sacrifice was. But a burnt offering, you put the whole thing on the altar and burn it up. That was a burn. And he told Abraham, he said, offer your son up as a burnt offering unto me. So Abraham was going up there to put this boy on the altar, hold everything on the altar and burn him because God told him to. Well, Father, I see the wood and I see the fire. Where's the sacrifice? God's going to provide himself a sacrifice. See, this, go, this burnt offering is going to God. He's going to provide his own. That's what Abraham said. I don't, somehow or another, he's going to provide his own. And Abraham got the boy, got ready, and the, and the angel said to him, stay your hand. Don't harm the child. Look. And there was a ram caught by his horn in the, in, in the bush. Abraham named that place Jehovah Jireh because God has provided for himself a sacrifice. Listen, we can't give God nothing. I don't care what God give you, you still can't give him nothing because he owns everything. The earth is the Lord, David said. And so we have to understand there's nothing we can give him because it all belongs to him anyhow. And so what we have to do is work with God as God provides for us. Let's work with God as he provides for us. He's providing for us. Everything we have comes from God. And if he asks for some of it back, we shouldn't be stingy. We should be willing to give it back to God because it's his anyhow. And we just have to learn how to do that. That's what we got to learn how to do is, is trust God. God. God is trying to get these people here to learn how to trust him. The test that they are taking and let me just read something from the uh, expository on the introduction. He said, life is filled with tests. And when we are still infants, he said, our parents releases grips on our hand to see if we can walk on our own. I was just watching my, uh, my little granddaughter the other day. Troy was, Troy was, she's standing up and Troy said, come on. She started walking. She started, and she would, you know, that's the test. Can you can you do this on? Can you come to me? And he kept backing, I guess, off a little bit. And she just kept coming. She kept coming. That's a test. Is you are you ready to do this on your own yet? That's what the test was. And and all of us been through that as babies. That God can. And that, let me say this: while you talk about a baby, uh, God give you baby tests at first. Mm -hmm. Some little small thing that happened to you that you have to learn how to trust Him in. He He does that. He, he ain't gonna he ain't gonna drop the big one on you. He ain't gonna drop no Job test on you until you get ready for that. You can't handle no Job test while you lose everything and your children and all that everything, and then your health is gone. Job lost all of his his finances, his family, his health failed. Everything failed, Job. You wouldn't have been able to handle that test unless you'd have been through some tests before. And so God, that's why you got to give you infants tests. Our school years are filled with tests. Later there are other kinds of tests, driver's tests, fitness tests, college entrance tests, employment tests, and uh, innumerable medical tests. They are all designed to benefit us in some way. That's what tests are for. Tests are to benefit you in some way. So God, these people are going to have to trust God in a land that they that they never been in before. So God had to test them. They had to be tried with these little bitty tests out in the wilderness. They're going to come up against some strong enemies that was much stronger than they were. They need to take these little tests first and get past these little tests and stop complaining. Get past the tests. 
If God is bringing something minor into your life, get past the test. Take the test and don't fail the test. And but I, I'm waiting to hear from the Lord. The teacher don't talk during the test. <laughs> teacher ain't going to talk to you during the test. The teacher wants you to take the test. Work through the test. The teacher not going to talk to you during the test. God might not say nothing to you while you're on the test. He's waiting on you to pass the test first. Mm -hmm. He's waiting on you to go through the test. Take the test, pass the test. He said the same is true of spiritual tests. They often accomplish, accompany physical tests. Challenging us to trust the Lord through pain. Sometimes it's hard to trust God through pain. Suffering that we go through. Losses. And hardships. Now when we get into this, this is where it's, this is some real tests then. When you get into the old type of thing, when things like that, you got the pain, you got the suffering, you got the loss in your life, you got hardships. That's when you time to you got to pass these tests. You got to pass these tests. God is testing you to see if you can pass it. A teacher give a test to see where the student is. When a teacher give, and I know we got teachers out there listening, and the teachers that are listening, uh, that 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 are listening, they they know that when when they give a test, they're trying to find out where their students are. If they can figure out where their students are, then they'll know what they need to do to bring that student up to where the student need to be. And that right, Sister Cole, right, Sister Crap, Sister Cole, right, <laughs> said, yes, Lord, that's a teacher. She's a teacher. And she know that you got to do that in order to figure out where they are. How do you know if, a, if, a, if they're getting what you're saying if you don't test them every once in a while? I used to hate tests. Mm -hmm. But now I understand. The teacher was checking me to see if I was getting what they were teaching. That's what it is. That's what a test is for. So to see if you're getting it. So God put tests on them to see if they're trusting. Are you trusting me yet? I done, I done, I done brought you out of Egypt. Then I, 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 I opened up the Red Sea. I killed Pharaoh's army for you. I gave you, I turned bitter water to, to drinking water. I gave you food, meat and bread. Meat and bread. Are you trusting me yet? So I brought you to this place where there is no water. Do you trust me yet? Mm -hmm. See, all they had to do was say, Moses, uh, when the Lord gonna provide us some water, I know I know He's gonna take care of us. But no, they come never complaining, chiding with Moses, fighting with Moses. We gotta learn to take the test. So even when we can see no immediate benefit, such tests are beneficial to us in the long run. Mm -hmm. See now, they were gonna need God in the long run. Cause they got they they gonna need him for some bigger stuff. If you remember when they got in the promised land, they got the Philistine, the Amalekites, they uh, they had the uh, uh, Amorites and the, and the Presites and all of these different nations. All of them was there waiting on them, and God was giving them a little test to see if He can provide water when He's already did it before. And they, they didn't know the long-term benefits from it. Some of the things we go through in life is just a little test to see if we can handle the long, long, it being this thing for the long haul. See, that I'm going to be honest with you, Christianity is a long haul. This ain't no, this ain't no sprint. We're in a, we're in a, in a, in a marathon. This is, this is, this ain't no sprint. Yeah, what? That's, I think that's what they call them, long run, marathon. This is a marathon. It ain't no sprint. So you're going to have to, you're going to, have to learn endurance while you're going through this stuff. So this is what God is trying to get you ready for, some endurance. As we've been studying in Revelation, it's going to be some rough times coming up for people who don't know Jesus Christ. And so you're going to have to learn to trust God now while you're going through some little stuff. you got to trust God. It ain't, it ain't nothing like what it's going to be. So you got to trust God now. Learn how to trust God. God. 
This is a this is a journey, a long journey. So they teach us about God, about ourselves, and about life itself in this cursed world. That's what tests the test from God does. Teach us about God, that God is a provider, that God will provide what is needed. He provides for us. And then it's, it tells us, where am I? I don't, do I have a faith that I talk about? I, I, I was talking to some people once in church and I said, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have mustard seed. Oh, yes, I do. I have mustard seed. I said, no, you don't have mustard seed. Yes, I have mustard seed faith. I said, no, you don't have mustard seed. Why you say I don't have mustard seed faith? I said, because I just heard you complain the other day about something. Mm -hmm. See, when you got faith in God, you don't complain. You say, well, whatever it is, you be like Paul. Paul said, I know all things going to work together for the good of them that love God and called according to his purpose. Now, Paul had learned some things. And so Paul said, I've learned to be content, no matter what state I find myself in. He said, I learned how to be content because I know God will provide. You just got to trust him. He will provide in that time for you. God is going to do it. He said, we can, however, mm -hmm. now watch this, mm -hmm. forfeit the benefits of the test God bring to our life. Now we can forfeit, ain't that something? You can forfeit the benefits that God bring into your life. And a whole lot of people, to be honest with you, I, a whole lot of people have forfeited their benefits. They've always, well, I, I thought the Lord was going to bring me through this. I don't know why the Lord did this. You, you, somewhere you didn't trust. Somewhere you, get, you didn't do right, and you forfeited the benefits of it. You got to take, you, when you take, you got to take the test, and you got to finish the test, and then you get the benefits of it. And that's what a lot of folks don't finish the test. A lot of folks bail out. A lot of folks leave church and bail out on God because things are, she wasn't going the way they thought they ought to go in the church. People wasn't treating me like right? they didn't talk to me right. They didn't do this. That ain't got nothing to do with God. You got to. It's a test whether or not you're going to trust God in the midst of whatever is going wrong. When pe people going to be people, but am I going to trust God? I'm going to let people be who they are, and I'm going to trust God to be who He is. Again, I got, I got to say something about myself. I can't talk about y'all. So, When I was president of the state convention, the people, there were some, there were some folks and who fought me. They did. There was a lot of, and, and you know what? All my fighting came from preachers. Every, every, all the fighting that I had, all the most, every opposition I had came from preachers. I heard some old preachers, and you know why it didn't bother me? Because I'd been through some tests. The old preachers, had, I heard old preachers say it before. Old preachers said this. They said, anytime the pastor's having trouble in the church, said, know that there's a preacher behind it some way. Whether he's a pastor or associate or, or, or just a preacher. But anytime a pastor's having troubles in the church, most of the time, there's a preacher behind it. And, and my, all of the ones, that, that, the ones that wouldn't support me, they stopped coming to the convention and stopped supporting the convention under, me, under my leadership. Then after I come out of office and they saw that I did a, a job that with the help of God to save the convention, and Dr. L. K. Curry, the most noted of all of our preachers of the, of the day, Dr. L.K. Curry, every time he got into the minister's division, he said to them preachers, Dr. Malone saved this convention. He said if he hadn't did what he did, this convention would have, would have died. He said he, he saved it. I saw it going, he said, but he saved this convention. And see, people will fight you. Don't, don't worry about it. Your test is gone. Do what you're doing. And let God do what he's going to do. Because God's going to provide for you. I didn't worry about them. I didn't take my time fighting with them. I just went on and did what God called me to do. And that's what you have to do. You can't, you got, you got to know God will provide for you. God's going to take care of you. 
And you got to trust him with that. So he said, don't, don't forfeit your benefits. Amen. Don't forfeit your benefits. When we fall, when we fail to learn from them, then we do not progress spiritually. Now that's the key right there. Anything that God brings before you, you need to learn how to progress spiritually. Now I, I'm going to tell you, the opposition I've had since I've been pastoring and preaching, it made me understand and be more spiritual. And it made me get into God. I've grown spiritually. I've grown to a point where Lewis don't jump up like Lewis used to. Lewis would want to fight. Lewis would want to cut. Lewis would want to shoot. He'd want to do something. But I've learned now. I've grown spiritually now. Opposition don't bother me. Because I know who's providing for me. I got Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. Learn that. Don't complain when God put a test in front of you to do something. Say, ask him. This is what I used to ask. Whenever something come up on me, I used to always say, Lord, now what do you want me to learn from this? I had to learn to say that. Lord, what is it that you want me to learn from this? I know you got something that you want me to learn from this. What is it that you want me to learn from this situation? And then God would give me that lesson. And then that lesson would help me when I came to the next test. So that's what you got to do. You got to don't complain. Don't, don't chide and tempt God and do all of that stuff. Start asking him, what is it that you want me to learn from this? And then learn your lesson. Get your lesson down and you can make a hundred on the test. <laughs> yeah, you can pass the test and make an A on your test. But if you sit around complaining, no, no, you're going to make a, you, the best you're going to get out of it is a D. If you, and, and it says some of them fail to benefit from the test. Don't, 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 don't fail to benefit when God brings something before you. Learn your lesson. What is it, Lord, that you want me to learn from this? Direct me as I go. Amen. And watch God provide. He is a provider. God is a provider. Trust him. When you go to bed, before you go to bed tonight, just whisper word. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh, for you have provided a place for me to lay my head. You provided a place for me to be out of this cold and rainy weather. You provided food. I don't have to go to bed hungry. Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, Lord. You learn to thank God. And then you go, I'm going to tell you something. The best antidote, those who've been through my new membership class under me know that the best antidote for a grumbling spirit, and let me hear y'all out there, is a grateful heart. <laughs> Amen. The best antidote for a grumbling spirit is a grateful heart. When you show God that you're grateful and thankful for what he's done for you, he'll do more for you. That's just like any good parent. Your children complain about everything. You don't give them nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> but they show gratitude. They're so grateful. Mama, thank you so much, Daddy. I'm so thankful. That... And then you can't, you can't beat yourself running your hand in your pocket, you know. Because that's why they show gratitude. So learn how to thank God. Learn how to be grateful. Because he will provide. Take the test. And don't, don't argue about the test. Just take the test. And, and pass the test. And benefit from the test. And then God will, will take care of you. Wow, that's, that's an awesome lesson, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So remember, Jehovah Jireh. That's all you, you just keep saying, Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. Amen. Jehovah Jireh. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you and give you peace. And uh, Sister Nita said, thank you, Pastor, for the powerful message. Lesson. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you.
And uh, thank God for all of you. And, and uh, you got to just hang in there. Amen. God is the God is a provider. So don't whatever you're going through right now, just remember, He still is a provider. There's nothing that He He can't provide for. He, the, he everything is, it belongs to Him. And I've seen God take your enemy or take a person's enemy and make that enemy take care of a person. He'll do that. He'll, he'll send your enemy to feed you when you're hungry. He'll send your enemy to do things that you never thought. This person, I, you know that person, I thought they hated me. And, and, and when I needed so-and-so, that's who was there. That's what God does. That's how God operates. He will send somebody to take care of you, and, and, but you just got to stay close to him. Trust him. Believe him. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to trust him. He give, what, it, what we're going through is for, for us to learn how to trust him in our most difficult situations. And he'll be there for you. Amen? This, is a, this to me, is an awesome lesson. And uh, I hope you got something out of it. And, and uh, nothing else, just, repeat, just keep repeating Jehovah Jireh. And then that God will provide. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Dr. Bird, thank you for being on. And uh, Dr. Bird said, yes, he will. Now, I, I tell y'all about my friend, Dr. Bird. Now, I, I have never heard this man complain about anything. And I'm going to share this with y'all. I'm going to let you go. I've never heard this man complain about anything. The man has an artificial leg. He has an artificial eye. He has fragments scars on his body and stuff. He was pronounced dead mm. on a chopper in Vietnam. But that man is a preaching, teaching man. And he, I never heard him complain. His leg is completely artificially. And he and his wife getting ready to celebrate 50 years of marriage this month. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he never, I never heard him complain. A great soul, great preacher, great teacher. So what you going to complain about? He's not complaining. Why are you going to complain? Be grateful. Be thankful. And bless the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Have a smile upon you and give you peace. Let us pray our way out. Our God and our Father are so grateful to you. We're thankful for all your benefits towards us. You blessed us in so many ways. You provided for us. You have, uh, even when things didn't look like we were going to make it, you provided a way for us. We just got to learn to trust you. You led them into this so they could learn how to trust you. Learn how to believe that you are a provider. And we ask that for our people today. If you would teach them and let them learn that you are a provider. We don't have to get jealous or envious of anybody else. Because what you can do for others, you got more resources than we could ever need. And what you give others, you're not going to give it to the other person. But you give us brand new mercies. We don't have to even ask for leftover blessings. We don't have to look at other folks and get envious and jealous, but if we rejoice with them and genuinely rejoice in our hearts with them and be glad for them and how you bless them, then you can bless us because you are a provider. Thank you for being that in our we pray, pray again for Sister Carolyn Hines' family, her daughters and you, her sisters, siblings and friends and all those that, that knew her father. We pray that you would bless her and bless that family continually. Keep them. And at the homegoing celebration on Saturday at 4 o'clock, we ask that your Holy Spirit would come in and comfort that family and keep them Thank and let them Lord. know that you are Jehovah Jireh, you, and you will provide them with whatever it is that they need. Mm -hmm. Comfort them and get them through that. In Jesus' name we Jesus pray. Name. Amen, 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 amen. God bless all of you. I love y'all with the love of God. And 
as one what preachers be on radio say, I love, I, I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Amen. God, if it's raining or anything, but it looks like it's going to be a clear day. So we'll probably be in the parking lot before it get too cold. Amen. 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 God bless all of you.